multiplying fractions for the first time. If you can successfully add fractions and subtract them, we can move to our next operation, multiplication. Look at this problem, one half times three quarters. I think it will help you to make sense of this if you know that, in math, we can read the multiplication sign as the word of. That means we can read this problem as one half of three quarters or three fourths. This diagram represents three quarters. To find half of everything here, I can cut each piece in half like this. I had four parts because it was in quarters and now those are halved, so I've got eight parts. We need to show half of three quarters, so I'm going to colour half of each of those yellow quarters we started with in blue. And we get three blue parts out of eight parts in the whole now. The answer is three eighths. It's a great way to represent multiplying fractions, but it's not the best method for actually doing problems. You'll get fed up fast because it takes a long time to do each diagram. But you are going to like the way we do this with mathematical working. It's really fast. Very simply, we multiply the numerators together, top times top, and then we multiply the denominators together bottom times bottom. And look at that, we get exactly the same answer as I did with the diagram that took me ages to make and colour. And if we can simplify our answer, we must. Three eighths, of course, can't be reduced, so we're all done. Now, if you like that, you know which button to click. Let's do another one, and this time we'll try it without the diagram. 2 thirds times 3 fifths. We know that we can multiply the numerators together now, so top times top. 2 times 3 is 6, then multiply the denominators together, bottom times bottom, that's 15. 6 over 15. Is that it? Nope, we have to reduce if possible, and 6 and 15 are both in the 3 times table. They're divisible by 3. 6 divided by 3 is 2, and 15 divided by 3 is 5. Our final answer is 2 over 5, 2 fifths. Remember, if we can reduce the fraction for our final answer, we must reduce it. Otherwise, you only get half marks because you only did half the job. And now, it's over to you. I think you can whiz through a worksheet of these things really quick. After that, come back for part two, in which I will show you a cool trick that you can sometimes use when multiplying fractions. It is a major time saver and I know you're going to like it. See you next time.